Now, I will just point out the in the issue of rewards, there are some people who feel um, perhaps that they're more spiritual than Paul or the Lord Jesus because they don't think you should live for rewards. Now, Jesus taught rewards and Paul lived for them, didn't he? It must be that we have some misunderstanding about the subject of rewards. We have this idea that rewards are mercenary and we don't want that feeling. We just want to do it for the Lord's sake. Ah, he says, that's just the point. The idea of rewards, as we see the four and twenty elders representing all the believing, casting their crowns at the feet of the Lord, evidently the glory of the rewards will not be for the recipients, but will be for the giver. And so the Lord says, you look after my business, I'll look after yours. Anything that is accomplished through us will go to the glory of the Lord, not to us at all. I told the story how on one occasion I went to an art gallery to see a series of paintings which had been done by a man who was in a prison camp. He had found some scraps of paper somewhere. He had made a brush out of the tail hairs of an unfortunate dog. He had um, got blue out of his prison uniform. He used his own blood. He had squished bugs. He had got a burnt umber and burnt sienna from the dirt and he painted some of the most beautiful watercolors I've ever seen. Now when I looked at those paintings did I think to myself I know his secret I'm gonna to have to go get some mud. It was it was the quality of the material he used that's the secret. Did any glory go to the dog tail hair brush or to the mud that he used? No. All, uh, the amazing thing is that he could do anything at all with that garbage. And when we see the masterpiece that the Lord has been able to accomplish, and we look at ourselves and say, Lord, how did you do that? With, with my stumbling, fumbling testimony? With my weak, half-hearted attempt? With my cold-hearted worship? How did you do that? This will be the biggest shock in heaven, won't it? When we stand on shore and dare to take a look at ourselves and say, Lord, you did it. I seem so uncooperative, so slow to learn, so cantankerous, so set in my ways, but somehow you have accomplished it and I'm like your son. You said you do that, didn't you? And you've done it. <laughs> it will be such an amazing thing. And there won't be any any desire at all for self-glory will say, Oh Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give the glory. He gave us the time, the opportunity, the ability, the encouragement, and someday he'll give us the reward. And we'll say, Lord, excuse me, this is yours. You did it. The purpose of the rewards is that we might have something with which to honor him, something with which to glorify him. And we'll have the joy of giving him something. We won't have anything else to give, you know. Why, everything we have is his. Our life is his, our joy is his, our peace is his. But the only thing we'll have is the little bit that's been accomplished down here by his grace alone. He'll put it into our hands. It's a bit like my children who come the 1st of January. If anyone wants to mark it down, if you're taking notes, my birthday is January 3rd. And um, I'll give you the address later, but... <laughs> They come to me and they say, Daddy, um, your birthday's coming up. I know what they want. They want me to give them some of my congealed sweat, my hard-earned cash, you see? And they want to take that and take it down to some department store and buy some little junky plastic things because I don't give them enough money to buy anything decent. And they bring it home and they wrap it up with more tape than paper and they, and they put a little tag on it and they give it to me. Is that a good deal? I think it's a wonderful deal. They take my money and they turn it into little bits of love. And they give it back to me. I think it's wonderful. You know, that's what God's doing. He has to give us everything we use. He has to give us our strength, our energy, our ability, our opportunity. He has to bless the word. He has to give souls the consciousness of sin. He has to give them illumination. I mean, what exactly is it that we do in the process? Well, we just show up, basically.
were just willing. He said to Moses, I'll be your mouth and your message. Just show up. Just be there. And that's basically what he's asking us to do. Those mighty men of David, what does it say? They just stuck it. When everybody else ran home, they just showed up. They just stayed there. And the Lord wrought a great victory. It's the Lord who does it. And so when we get home to heaven and he unrolls this magnificent masterpiece, we will stand agape at it. It will make this creation look like nothing. And he will gather us around himself and we'll be at home and we'll never say goodbye. We'll never leave again. Home at last. Every one of his children home there. And oh, the joy of it. And so when we think of rewards, we ought to be spurred on by this. That that what he's giving us, he's giving us so that we'll be able to give it back for the glory and honor of our Lord Jesus.